Hello, Internet. Uh, I'm here to do another pet game edition. Today, I want to add pagination or pagination or however you say it. Um, so I alluded to this in a previous video when I did the uh, a list of all the players in the game. Um, you don't necessarily want to just pull everything out of one one table. In fact, you, you definitely don't want to um, because there might be a lot of stuff in there. Uh, if you were doing like a single player game, maybe you could get away with it and say, well, if a person adds tons of pets, I don't know, they slow it down for themselves, who cares? I don't know, that's still a little rude. But definitely for a multiplayer game, it's not just slow for the person playing, but it's also slow for the entire server. It's um, for other people playing, they're going to be like, why is the website so slow? And it's because someone with a thousand pets has hit their home page and it's loading them all up. Or if you followed along with that player video, you just have a thousand players. Congratulations, people are playing your game. Uh, you can't not paginate or paginate uh, that list. So I have here hacked myself uh, 15 pets. Here they all are. Um, and I would like to break these up into pages of 10. I don't know, it's a reasonable number, uh, but you could maybe let someone even select that with a drop down or something. I don't think I'll go that far for this video. But regardless, we want some like next, previous, maybe show you where you are. You know, you've seen this on a million billion websites, that kind of thing for, for jumping through pages of pets. So let's start doing it. Um, I'm going to come over to the My House page. So where we load the pets currently, here we go. Um, so this gets the list of pets, right? This lists them all out for each pet. Show it. Show this like do and explore link, which <laughs> maybe in the base I should make this look a little better. It look, does look kind of janky right now, but uh, I will leave it to you to clean up and beautify the, the website um, for your very own pet game. I don't even know if you want buttons there. So whatever. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, we want to only list part of these pets. So the commands to do that, by the way, when we're operating here, we've got like skip and take. So skip, we could say, you know, let's skip the first 10 and then we'll take 10, 10 being the size of one page. And you could say, oh, I want to skip the first 20. That would be skipping the first two pages or skip zero. That's don't skip any, only take the first 10. And we can just do this. I mean, let's do this and see that it works. Um, but we will have only 10 pages, or sorry, only 10 pets in our house rather than, um, what was it, 15? By the way, if you're using Visual Studio, I'm not even trying anymore. You may have noticed that when I got rid of code, it's like, oh, sources are modified. Do you want to apply the changes? This is supposed to just instantly apply the changes on the site. It's not working for me at all. Um, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. I don't know if Writer just doesn't quite support it. Um, I feel like Visual Studio is a little better at it. Um, so it's called hot reload. So if you have any issues, and I have no idea where, where VS Code stands um, on supporting hot reload. So depending on the IDE you're using, it may or may not work. Um, and you might want to Google hot reload for Blazor and then whatever IDE you're using and see what you can figure out and see what the options are available. For me, it's not working right now. Um, and I don't know, spoilers, if you didn't already guess, I'm recording all these videos way in advance. Like, uh, so. You know, you probably, are, if, if you're following along on these videos, it may have already been two weeks and you're like, how does he still have that issue? It's only been a day for me. That's how I still have that issue. So anyway, we only have 10 pets. Perfect. That's working. Uh, but we have no way to skip through the pages. So we're going to want a little variable to track that. What is the current page we're on? Um, so let's make something for that. And then actually, I think we want a couple things. So we'll want a public in. What is your current page? And that'll start at zero. Um, actually, starting at one isn't bad. So let's do that. So for human readability, you know, humans think of pages as starting at one. Um, that's going to be a little more work here because when we skip, I'll get to that later and I'll talk about it. Either way, you're going to have to do some extra math um, because we'll get to it when we get to it. <laughs> let me let me set these up first. The next thing I want is how big is a page? Um, yes, GitHub Copilot and I think I've mentioned this before, I'm using GitHub Copilot. It's an AI autocomplete plugin, so it looks at all your code and makes crazy good suggestions. Um, although I would say they're like 90% crazy good. It, it does get wrong, that 10%, and sometimes it gets wrong in really funny ways. Um, but it, it definitely more helpful than, than harmful, for sure. Uh, I'd say definitely try it out if you haven't already. Um, and there's another one out there, like Tab 9, I think. GitHub Copilot's the one I feel like everyone's talking about, but there are others. Um, so anyway. Um, yes, we have a page size, and the reason I want to name this variable, and you may have noticed I, I called it const, it's a constant, this shouldn't be changing, um, 
But there's two reasons to, to name this and not just put 10 in here. One of them is like, well, what about this 10, you know? What about this 10? Like, there's all these 10s and, and 3. Why is it 3? It's good to name the value so that you know what it means. What this 10 is is max energy. And so it would be nice to call this max energy and max energy so that when you're parsing through, you don't have to be like, oh, is that 10 the same as that other 10? No, they're different 10s. And in this case, it's pretty easy to figure out. But when you're jumping around a ton of different pages or it's just been three months since you looked at it at some page, it gets real confusing just to have a bunch of numbers scattered all over. Um, so yeah, name, name your numbers. Uh, in programming, they call this a magic number. You shouldn't have magic numbers in your code. They should all have names. So I'm going to name page size. I didn't name max energy in the past. That's bad on me. Uh, you might want to take the opportunity to do that. The other reason to name the variable, though, to and, and use it, especially when we're going to use it in multiple places, like for max energy and page size, is what if you decide later it isn't fixed? Maybe it's fixed right now, but maybe you say, oh, I want to add a drop down where you can select the page size like I was I think I mentioned that earlier, or maybe for pets, the maximum energy right now is, is fixed at 10, but maybe you're like, oh, actually, I'm going to change it. It's now tied to the pets level. Um, so by, by having already consolidated that number, rather than having a 10 scattered in 20 different places that you have to go, no, nope, that's the new, that's the new thing, that's the new thing. Um, it's already got a name and you can just change how the value is assigned. So for now, this page size is constant. Again, maybe you take it upon yourself to make a drop down where they can change the page size. Um, I'm going to say, nope, I'm just fixing it for the purposes of this video. Um, and you might even leave it fixed. There's no reason to offer maybe the, the player to select the page size. You know, that's a nice to have. You don't have to implement that. So whatever, up to you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, the other thing we want to do, or I'm going to go ahead and leave it const, I mean, and not let them change. Uh, we want to skip pages, so we want to skip the current page times the page size. Pretty good guess from Copilot, but, and this is where I was saying, we've got to do some math. So for a human, page one makes sense as the first page, but for the, you know, in terms of skipping, we want to skip the first some number, but it needs, but, but if they're on page one, we want to skip no items. So we turn, so we need to say minus one, it's page zero times doesn't matter what the page size is. We all know that zero times anything is still zero. So they'll skip nothing when they're on page one. And on page two, they'll skip a little more. And so on and so on. OK, we've got that. But there's currently no way for the player to change the page. Um, so we can add that. And I'll go ahead and do that. I'm already anticipating a problem. But maybe we'll get to that later. So let's just take it one step at a time. Let's make the buttons. We'll make some buttons. Um, there's also an issue here, but I might as well do that. And this is interesting. I don't know what this means. Yeah, GitHub Copilot has said something that doesn't work. It was an interesting guess. It clearly doesn't super know um, how this works, um, how Blazor works. But yeah, that's not quite right. So yeah, we want to decrement the page, but we then we're going to, that's not enough. We also have to say, oh, I want to reload them. So I think instead I'm going to say, call a function called previous page, which I haven't made before. And maybe I should spell. I'm not being, you know, we're not charged by the letter. We can afford to type out the real names of things. Um, and let's do next page. And next. If you learned, like, especially older programming languages, I feel like, like C and C++ and even Java a little bit. Um, Java is better about this. Um, but there is, like, this weird tendency from times long ago to name things super short. There's no reason to do that. Like, give it a name. I mean, also, don't make it crazy long just because you can. But, but pick a name that you can read it, and it reads like English, and you know what it means without having to think. I mean, prev, I feel like, I mean, I type prev because I think we all know, especially in this content, prev next, got it. Um, maybe it's satisfying to some kind of OCD that they're the exact same length. <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm laughing about that because that sort of thing appeals to me sometimes, too, where it's, that has that that. <laughs> that mild OCD pleasure. Um, but anyway, I, yeah, name things so that you can easily understand them and hopefully so that someone else can under easily understand them or that you, again, in three months coming back to this page and you haven't looked at it in the last three months can also easily understand what is meant by these things. So give things good names. Um, and good means easy to understand as a casual observer. Um, and maybe as someone who doesn't know a lot of code. Uh, which I think are some people watching this, these videos. Uh, and you might be per you might already not have that weird preconception of stupid short names. So if, you, if you've done, done no coding, you might even be like, oh, why wouldn't I call it something obvious to me? You might even be in a better state in that way than 
than some programmers. Um, so anyway, let's go previous page. So we want to do the thing that it was suggesting of do current page minus minus, or when I say it, sorry, GitHub Copilot suggested this current page minus minus. Yes, that's one of the things we want to do. The other thing we want to do is load the pets again. We could call this uninitialized async function. Um, that would be kind of a weird thing to do. I think technically, like technically it will work. But this, this function conceptually, again, based on the name, this is when this, well, when this, this page is initialized and this page, meaning this whole thing that we're looking at, when this thing is visited for the first time, what do I need to do? That's what we put in on initialize. We might later add other things here. It's not, and I don't want to, you know, call something that, again, based on name, it's conceptually, this is for when we first initialize. We don't want to call that logic again, because we might add other stuff there that is conceptually for initialization. So we want to, yes, we want to call something called load pets. Thank you, GitHub Copilot. So I'm going to make a function called load pets, and I'll make on initialized call load pets as well. Um, load pets. And we'll make a little function called private async task load pets. And I'll just paste back in that code. I had cut it a while ago, and here it is again. Um, so we'll do the current page, and we'll get the pets, and that'll do it. And um, this my pets variable, once we set a new value for that, this, the HTML part will know and it will re go through this loop and redraw the pets and that'll all work. So, ooh, excuse me, uh, we're all good there. Um, so let's do now the next page. I was kind of hoping, I paused for a minute there because I was like, GitHub Copilot, <laughs> you're going to suggest? It'll probably suggest from here. No? Sometimes it gets confused. Yeah, okay, you saw that. Sometimes it gets confused. Um, it's kind of fighting with the IDE. It is a plugin. It's not part of Writer or part of Visual Studio or whatever. You can get Copilot for Visual Studio, I believe now, in VS Code. Um, but when I press Enter, the IDE automatically put my cursor in a little bit. And I think that's throwing off GitHub Copilot. Copilot was about to suggest something, but then it was like, oh, never mind, you're typing. Uh, but I wasn't typing. The IDE was doing something. I, so I think there's some sort of conflict happening there. One thing I've gotten in the habit of doing is saying, OK, I'm going to delete. Right, and it's like, oh, you typed something. Um, and then I can auto-complete. So I don't know, it's kind of weird. The GitHub Copilot, ugh, can't speak. GitHub Copilot definitely sometimes acts a little funny. It used to be worse. They've been making it better with every release. Um, and tab nine is older, so maybe they've already solved these issues. I don't know, I haven't tried it out. Um, so anyway, this should work. We have next buttons and previous buttons. Um, if you're thinking about it, if you've done this kind of thing before, you're probably aware of an issue. Um, I'm aware of an issue too, and we're going to get to it, so don't worry. Um, but let's go ahead and log in again. If you had hot reload working, you wouldn't have to log in all the time. All right, next. Great. Next. It's working. Uh-oh. Uh Wait, I can keep going next. <laughs> and now I'm next so far that I have to click previous a bunch to get back. Oh, thank goodness. Here we are again. It also is, ugh, it is also a little annoying that the previous and next button are kind of moving out from under us. There are things we could do about that. Oh, also, I can click previous and go into the negative pages. And that, then I, yeah, and but then you're kind of stuck on page. Okay, so there's obviously we've got some issues here we want to fix. There is another subtler issue. Um, it might not happen so much on my house uh, where you're kind of going through your pets, but there are a lot of pages where a user might reasonably expect that when they click the back button on their browser, they go to the previous page. But oops, I've been taken all the way back to the login <laughs> because that was the previous page. Um, we want to fix that too. Uh, and I'll show you how to fix that. Just again, to make the experience nice. And especially like for me, I just have extra buttons on the side of my mouse that I use to go back. So I'm, I'm so used to just clicking back with the mouse and not even like going all the way up here. So it just comes so easily. Uh, so anyway, we want to fix both these issues. We can go off the ends, which is uh, bizarre, right? The ends of what's available. Um, and the back stuff isn't working properly. So let's fix both of those issues. Um, 15 minutes into the video almost. We'll see how quick I can get this done. Um, which one first? Let's go for the pages getting out of range, I would say. This one's pretty easy to fix, kind of. We need to know how many total pages there are. In order to know how many total pages there are, we need to know how many pets there are, and we know how many pages there are per pet, and, or sorry, how many pets there are per page, and so we can do that math. So um, let's get the total number of pets. We'll say like, um, oh my god, get, get a profile for real? Total pets, I mean, yes, that is correct. So yeah, okay, cool, yep. Okay, so total number, get all the pets where they are owned by you and count them. 
You can also, by the way, sometimes the IDE suggests this. I don't know why it's not suggesting it now. Um, you can also just do this. You can say count and give it the condition to count on the pets where the owner equals a thing. So either way, I think it maybe reads a little more naturally this way if you're new to this stuff. I don't know. Either way, well, I'll do it this way. I've shown you both. So you can pick the one that reads best to you. Um, if total pets equals zero, yeah, that's an interesting thing to do. We are going to divide by the total number of pets. But here's a case where I'm going to say I'm not going to worry about it. Um, we know that when you sign up in the game, uh, you are given one pet. So you're always going to have at least one pet. There's currently no way to give up pets in the game. And even if there were, I think it would be kind of a Pokemon situation where we'd be like, whoa, don't give up your last pet. <laughs> right? We'd probably prevent you from doing that because you'd be in a bad state. So, I mean, it kind of depends. Depending on what you're paging over, you, you would want to make some special handling for zero. So maybe I should just do it. Let's see what GitHub Copilot will suggest. Um, I said I wasn't going to do it, and now I'm doing it. And again, I'm going to do my little and go, oops, you don't have any pets yet. That's a funny thing. Interesting. So it suggests it, GitHub Copilot has noticed that we have this way of showing alerts because, again, it's looking at this file. Um, it, it even gave the title of the dialogue. Oops, you don't have any pets yet. That's funny. I'll, I'll accept that. Um, I kind of like that. Uh, one other thing that we should do is if we know there are no pets, we want to set this to um, be an empty list. Um, it is conceivable. You know, I don't know how your pets are coming and going, but maybe you're looking at this page, you click previous, and something has happened. Maybe you had your pets up for sale, and someone bought all the pets out from under you. You click previous, um, and we, so we should make sure just to clear out the list of pets if it found that the total pets is zero. Somehow that happened. I mean, we're, we're catching a weird case anyway. We're not expecting this to even be able to happen in this game. So if we're going to catch it, let's be thorough and complete. Make sure that we we empty this. And by the way, this is kind of weird way. To, there's a number of ways you could do this. You could say, um, is it clear? Yep, you could say clear. I thought it was empty. Um, there's a reason why it's complaining about that. Uh, the other thing you could do is you could say, I want this to be a new list of pets. That's another thing you can do. Using just new is equivalent to that only because um, it uh, C Sharp knows that this is a list of pets. Um, and Ryder is suggesting, hey, maybe that's uh, a little um, vague of you, you know, maybe we should make it easier to read. The other thing you can do if you're security concerned, maybe I shouldn't, actually that won't work in this case, never mind. Um, there's uh, other ways depending on exactly how you set up the list. So anyway, let's do this. This is the most readable maybe. My pets is a new list of pets, totally empty. Um, great. Uh, okay, that's a total pets is zero. That's almost never going to happen. Let's do the work we actually want to do. Okay, so this is what GitHub Copilot suggests, and I like this, but I'm going to do something a little different. So it says, if the current page was less than one, right? So you clicked previous too many times, make the current page be one. If you went past the end, and it's interesting, we're not getting a page count here. It's figuring out the page count, but it's actually doing it wrong. So that's something else to call out. But it's trying to say, if you've gone past the end, then set you to the end. Here's a problem. Um, and I'm surprised writer's not calling me out on this, because sometimes it does. So these are both integers, whole numbers. Um, this is page size is an integer. It sets 10 total pets. That's an integer. Whole number, whole number. When you ask C sharp and any, a lot of languages do this. Um, so I'm just trying to speak in a way, not assuming what, what programming languages background you have. So this may or may not be surprising, but we have asked C sharp. I'm, I've got an integer. I'm doing math with another integer and C sharp says, great. I bet you want an integer out of that. That's its assumption. It says you've, you've done math on two integers. I'm giving you an integer. That's just my rule. Um, that's not what we want, because if we do that, suppose we have, um, you know, 10 pets per page and we have 15 pets going to say 15 divided by 10 is one point. Never mind. I'm not doing that one total pages is one. And that's incorrect. Our page total pages is two that that extra 0.5 of a page matters for us. So we can convince it. There's a couple ways. Um, double is not a very, uh, maybe user friendly way, or if you don't know the various types, um, decimals may be a little more natural. So let's say decimal. And, and what this is saying is I know that page size is the integer, but I want you to treat it as a decimal. And now C sharp says, oh, I've got an integer and I'm dividing it by a decimal. Well, goodness, I'm probably going to get a decimal back out of that. So this is our real total number of pages. There's one other thing I want to do, and I'm just going to make like total pages. Yeah, look at that. It really thinks that that's the way to do it, but it's wrong. 
Um, and actually, sorry, I don't want this to be total page. We can also like last page. What is the last page? Okay, the other thing we want to do here is this is going to give us an answer of 1.5, as we expect, but we want that to be a 2. <laughs> we want to round up, and the way to round up is to use ceiling. Uh, interesting that it auto completed that way. It's ceiling. So ceiling means round up. You just kind of have to know that. And again, if you've done other programming in other languages, you probably are familiar. So return the smallest integral value that is greater than or equal to the specified decimal number. So round up, in other words. Um, and then we add 1 because. Um, Page two. Nope, we don't add one. Now, now we don't add one. So you might. So GitHub Copilot adding the one there would be pretty good, unless the total pets is ten because ten divided by ten is one. But if we add one and have two pages, wait, that's wrong because ten all fit on one page. So it might have been adding the plus one to do the rounding up, but that's not that rounding up works in nine out of ten cases. <laughs> so it's still not perfect. So yeah, it's it's doing something a little funny here. Um, Okay, so we will say if the current page then is greater than the last page, then it should be last page. So if last page is two and you went to three, well then you need to be last page. Oh, and I know why it's complaining. So even though it did a round up, it still keeps it as a decimal. So it's like, oh, you're storing, you're working with decimals. So I'm going to store that's you know 2.0 or something. Um, but current page is an integer. So and you can't, you're not allowed to just blindly assign a decimal value to an integer because now C sharp is like, well, but Right, and this is it's related to the problem we were having before. It's like, but you were only working with integers before, and so I was giving you integers, and now you're working with decimals, and you want to put it in integers? You can't do that. <laughs> C sharp's in a fuss, so we have to be very specific about it, about the types. Um, if you haven't done much programming before, this really seems really cumbersome. It is a little cumbersome. Ultimately, it, it protects you in the long run. Um, it is good to be explicit about the data types going around. For numbers like this, it maybe like feels less useful. Um, but when you've got other types of things going around, like pets, right? Like you don't want to just be able to assign a pet to a number or a name or, you know, the, those kinds of things. And so C Sharp generally is just like, look, we have to be super explicit about the data, what it is when you're when you're using it. So it can be a little cumbersome, but you and, and you'll see this sort of stuff a lot in code uh, when you're working with numbers converting between types. Uh, it happens a lot more with numbers. We would never convert a pet to a number that wouldn't make any sense. Um, but then anyway, OK, one more thing I want to do with this, just because I know I can, there is a more succinct way than than doing this, whether I'll leave it up to you, whether or not you think it's more or less readable, stick with the one you think is more readable, but you can. Oh, Copilot was doing it clamp. Yes. So there's a function called clamp that just says whatever this value is, make sure it's between these two values. So it's equivalent to what we wrote before. If the current page is less than one, then it's going to return out one. If it's greater than last page, it's going to return out last page, and then we'll assign that to current page. So that's another way to do the same thing. It's less lines, which is nice. Um, again, are you, I would say go with whatever is more readable to you. Whatever, when you come back in three months and you look at the code, what would make the most sense to you to look at? Stick with that. Um, if that's clamp, if that makes sense, maybe you've seen that. Maybe you come from like a math lab or you, yeah, math lab, I guess. Sorry, or is some other background and you've seen some of this stuff before and you're like, clamp, I get it. Um, if not, go with the other method. Again, do it do as readable for you. Um, this is your project. So uh, well, when you get to working with other people, then you can get into fun arguments about what's more readable. And that's, that's a whole other fun adventure. Um, OK, we've done a lot of the work. Let's run this. <laughs> the only thing left I want to do now, we're at 23 minutes, is um, Make it so that clicking back and forward on the browser works, because that part we still haven't addressed. Um, and that is a nice thing to give to players. And, and it's a nice to have. Maybe you're comfortable releasing it this back. So this used to seem to have the same result. But now we immediately go next, and it worked, right? And when we click next, we can't go any further next. So that's working. So that's great. We're confined within the pages. Let's list out the pages available. I'm going to do that. Um, and let's also fix the. Uh, back issue with the, because again when I click back if I click next here but then I click back with the mouse button or back on the browser it takes me back to the login page which maybe isn't what I was expecting I was probably expecting to go to page one also when I go forward I'm not on page two which is where I left off right so it's like totally lost my progress and I would let's let's fix that issue and maybe for pet listing depending on your game that's not as important but like uh so the video where I brought this issue up with pagination before was listing players and you might imagine oh I want to click a link to go into a player page. Now I click back. 
you would expect to be on the same page of players as when you clicked into that player profile, not all the way back at page one, um, which is what's going to happen right now. It, it has no memory of where you were in the pages. So we got to fix that. Uh, I'll just stop it running. I don't know why. I was doing it, and I don't know why I was doing it. OK, so the way to do it is we want to actually use URLs, right? You may have noticed as we click through the pages, this always just said my house. Um, there was no indication of what page we were on here, and that's the problem. And I mean, we could, you know, let's see how Google does this. Um, hi, I wonder what that will pull up. And if we go to the next page, oh, do they not do that anymore? Oh, Google's all infinite loading. I forgot that they changed it. There used to be pages, but this is all the rage now to so do the infinite loading. Um, what if we do DuckDuckGo? Do they still do pages? More results? No. Wow, I forgot. In my brain, Google still had like the thing at the bottom that says Google with the O's for the pages. That probably is like 10 year old information. And that's been in my brain this whole time. I can't believe that I thought there were pages on Google. When did they stop doing it? <laughs> Blowing my mind. OK, well, you've probably, <laughs> you've probably seen things will be like, you know, page equals three or something. You may have seen that in URLs, forums or something like that. Another thing you might see is like slash page slash three or something like that. There's a lot of ways that you could do the URL. And I'm going to do something like that uh, latter thing where I'm just going to put the current page. Oh my gosh, GitHub Copilot, you're cheating, you're spoiling it. So yes, we want current page. Another thing that GitHub Copilot didn't do, but I would like, is um, you can tell up front, and this is a hint for Blazor, what is the type of variable? Again, things are strong, you know, is it a decimal, is it an integer? In this case, it doesn't matter as much because, so this name, and this is a failing on, on writer's part. Maybe Visual Studio is better about this, I don't know. This current page, it should stop me if I type blah, 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 because that doesn't, there's nothing called gadgad, -gad, but there is something called current page. And usually when there's something with a name, right, we get red, no, that's bad, or blue, yes, that's good, I recognize that. So it would be great if it was able to do that here, and that might just be a failing on writer's part. Maybe Visual Studio is good about that. Um, the other reason that's nice when it auto-completes, by the way, is because then you don't even have to type the whole thing, right? You say my, yep. Enter, got it. Um, but we can't do that in the string here, unfortunately. So eh. as IDEs get better, the, the support will be better. And again, Visual Studio, maybe even VS Code, they've got that. So anyway, yes, this has to match to a variable. And this is some Blazor magic. It's going to say, cool, you have a thing called current page. I'm going to set your thing called current page to match whatever is after the slash in the URL. Um, by the way, I'll just head this off at the pass. That's a word phrase people use, right? Uh, this would also mean that when we visited my house, it would say there's no such page as my house. There's a page such as my house slash a page, <laughs> but there's no such thing as my house. So we need to tell it both. Both are here. Um, I think there's actually technically a way to say it's optional. Do you do it that way? I don't remember. Um, I'm just going to specify both because to me, that's more readable. <laughs> we'll use that defense. Um, so yes, you can either visit this page by going straight to my house or my house and some specific page number. Both of those are acceptable. Um, and then down here, we need to do one more thing. We need to identify this as a parameter, something that can be set from the outside. As it, well, I don't know. It's a technical Blazor thing. Just know that if you're, you're going uh, to set a, a parameter from, from the URL, if you're going to set some value from the URL, you need to mark it as a parameter. Um, and we're going to see why that is uh, important in a little bit. Um, let's also update these links. So no longer are we going to go to previous page, next page. We are going to um, visit the page by just putting the page number. So we will go to my house. And then, yeah, the previous page is the current page minus one. That is what we want. All right, current page plus one, that's the next. All right, this is going to mostly work. Let's run. Um, and if you're wondering what about the starting value, oops. Uh, you know, when you just go to my house, which we're about to do, and there is no page number, well, then what is um, current page set to? It's going to be zero because that's the default value for integers. Um, if you want it to be, oh, sorry, one, sorry, yep, page one, never mind. We have specified a default, so that's the default that we'll use. Uh, so let's go next. Oh, did it not? Or is this just not working? Aha, uh -huh. I think I know what's happening. Yes, I know what's happening. Sorry, this was the thing I was alluding to before, and I already forgot about it. So, we have said on initialized, and then this is a built in function. You can see override. So any component that you make, this page is, is considered a component in Blazor terminology. You can see we have some other components here, like 
pet card and things, but my house, these pages are also components, and every component has a bunch of built-in methods. On initialize async is one of them, and whenever you want to give it some of your own behavior, you say override. Whatever you thought you were doing before, component for your on initialize async, I've got something to tell you. Override, here it is. I want to load pets. There is another built-in method we need to use, and your IDE will be nice and help you out here. We want to override, not on initialize, not on after render, not, here we go, on parameter set. And we're going to do the async method, on parameter set async. Um, when to choose async versus not is a whole other topic. Um, might be worth Googling await async um, or looking up YouTube videos or whatever. Ask chat GPT. Um, but as a general rule for, for components in Blazor, just prefer to do stuff async. Um, I think I've talked about this in other videos, but it's all to do with the fact that you don't know how long things are going to take and when the user might start clicking on other stuff. So, you know, right now it's really instant fast to load up pets. There's no chance the user does something else. But in the future, maybe someone hits your player page and you forgot pagination. It lags out the server. And in the meanwhile, someone's trying to click next to go to the next pet page. You don't want stuff to start locking up even more. Um, and async will help help prevent you. This is kind of broad terms here, but but anyway. So we need to say on parameter set. And the reason is, even though we're, we're like going to a new page, a new URL, um, Blazor is smart and says, yeah, but it's the exact same component here. I don't need to reinitialize it from scratch. And so it's not calling on initialized, which means we're not calling load pets. But it is updating this current page parameter. And happily, I mean, it'd be crazy if they didn't, but Blazor offers an on parameter set. So you can also listen for when that thing happens. These are all called lifecycle events. So if you wanted to Google for Blazor component lifecycle events, you can find information. There's a, bu there's a bunch of them. Um, you also saw them when I typed override and was looking through the options. Um, these, I feel like, are definitely the most common to use on initialize and on parameters set. I feel like I'm using those all the time. Um, there's a different way for, um, they don't have like an on uninitialized or on destroyed. There's another way you do that in case you're curious. Um, something else the IDE is telling me, previous page and next page, we're not using anymore. So we can get rid of those um, because now we're doing it by URL, uh, not buttons. By the way, little side point, we could use, um, we could have still said like A and done on click, um, but then we wouldn't get the browser thing. Um, and you could also make a button and say on click navigate them or something. Don't, you can attach an on click event handler to anything basically, but you, that doesn't mean you should. Like if you put an on click event handler here, you can make it, if they click anywhere on the whole pets area, I want to call a function. The reason you shouldn't do that, there's a couple reasons. Um, one, it's not good for keyboard navigation, uh, which, you know, some people just like to tab through things, especially if you, if your game has a lot of forms in it. Some people aren't using the mouse. Maybe they have a, a shitty mouse they don't like, or maybe their hands are shaky, or maybe they don't have hands. Um, I mean, so yeah, there's access and there's other accessibility reasons as well. Screen readers will, you know, if your player can't see or just has a lot of trouble seeing things are just very blurry for them. Um, and it's hard to make stuff out. They're just old and they haven't pulled the micro, uh, they're, uh, sorry, I was going to say microscope, a uh, magnifying glass up to the monitor. There's a guy at my job who literally has a magnifying glass. He pulls up to his monitor. Um, he doesn't use a screen reader though. Maybe it would help him out. I don't know. I think he, maybe his vision just isn't quite that bad yet, but, and, and one more point, one more other thing that matters is, uh, Google as a search engine crawling your website. All of these technologies are assuming that you're using tags in the way they were kind of intended. An A tag is meant to take you to another, is meant to have an href that takes you to another URL, not a button with a click. Buttons with clicks don't take you to other site pages. They could, but that's not the, the common thing. And then certainly a, like divs aren't even supposed to be clickable at all. And so your browser won't stop to highlight it when you tab through elements. The screen reader might not notice. Google certainly isn't going to notice if they're crawling your website. So these are all reasons to really use the elements as, as they're intended. You want to be friendly to Google so that they give you a good ranking. Uh, you want to be friendly to people who maybe they just don't have their mouse today. Maybe they can't use a mouse. Maybe they can't see very well. Maybe they can't see at all. Um, and uh, yeah, sc other technology screen readers aren't the only thing, right? Google is not the only other, uh, the only thing. Um, you know, when people have browser plugins to do stuff on the site for whatever reason, all of these things are expecting you to use tags the way they were designed. So anyway, so I, it was a conscious decision, switch from a button to an A tag here because we're navigating from page to page and that's what A tags are for. 
Um, so anyway, uh, sorry, that was a little side thing. That's, it's one of those, I don't know, I bring it up because it's a thing I've had to really like hammer into developers at other jobs. Um, and, and it does lead to problems. It also can lead to weird bugs um, in behavior when you start using things in ways the browser wasn't quite expecting. Because again, like the browser itself is expecting you to use these things in that way. And, and like technically you can do some things, but that might start to, especially when maybe you use one thing wrong and that's fine, but then you like use two things wrong and then three things wrong and then four things wrong. And then they start to interact with each other in weird ways. Then you have weird, confusing bugs that don't make sense. And it's, so you're, yeah. Just use, just use the tags as they ought to be. And that's a whole other thing. Depending on how much HTML you know, it might be worth Googling about buttons and inputs and all these things if you're going to be making a web game for sure. So anyway, um, <laughs> that was all a lot to say a little. Um, are we working here now? No, why not? I forget. I said all that talking. Ah, yes, parameters set. OK, that was the whole thing. <laughs> I lost my place. 35 minutes. Oh, no, I don't want to keep you an hour. We should finish up. Um, whoops. Uh, let's reload. Just because I opened so many tabs, I didn't know where I was anymore. All right, next. Great. And next, we can't go next anymore. Previous. Can't go previous anymore. All right, this, I'm going to call this good enough there, for the purposes of this video. There are other things you might want to do. You might want to put previous and next also at the top. Um, you might want to list the page numbers in between, including what page number they're on. I mean, I can show you how to list what page number they're on. That's pretty easy. You would just say current page um, and maybe make it bold. Which, speaking of using things the right way, you shouldn't use bold. We would use strong um, because strong has a conceptual meaning and bold has only a visual one. So there's another little uh, accessibility tip for you. All right, so you're on page one, you're on page two. And again, you could, you probably want to list out all the possible pages. You could, you know, well, not all of them. Again, the whole reason we did pagination is we don't know how many pets you have. We also don't know how many pages you have. So don't list out every single number. Maybe just list like the first three, the couple around the current page, and the last three. You've probably seen things like that in pagination links on forums and other things before around the internet where they don't do the infinite load, <laughs> which is the hot thing. For some context, that it makes sense. I don't know if it would make sense for pets in your house. Maybe I'll make a video doing the infinite reload. Um, but for now, we've done pagination, pagination. Um, plenty of little improvements to make. Uh, you might also think about pulling this out. We talked about components briefly. Pull this out into a paging component. Um, you know, we're going we were expecting to display lots of pets, maybe pets in other places on the site. If you watched the video, I have a video about adding breeding to your game, and we. Uh, oh, actually, I think we don't reuse the pet card for that. So. Never mind, bad example. Um, but you might expect to display pets in other places, maybe like a player's profile page. Um, and pagination, same thing. You might expect to have pagination all over the place on a list of players, in your house, maybe on a market if you're out of market, I don't know, quest log, all kinds of places. So it might be a good thing to make a component out of um, Google around for how to make Blazor components. Um, look at this and use this in, as an example. This is pretty good. We can see there's some URLs being constructed out of some parameters of things getting passed in. You can kind of see how that's tied together. So you might be able to piece together a, a pagination uh, component out of that, or a pagination component, if you want to call it that. Um, so anyway, that's the end of the video. Uh, 40 minutes to make pages. That's probably good. Um, if you make something awesome out of your uh, pet game, your copy of pet game, I would love to know about it. And if you have ideas for other types of things you would like me to kind of go through in pet game to add to the thing, um, let me know. I'm, I'd have, be happy to hear about all those things. Um, anyway, thank you very much and goodbye.